What's going on guys, welcome to Season 2 of NHL 24, Salt Lake City Dragons Expansion Mode Series. As always guys, thank you so much for the support in the last episode. If you could also leave a thumbs up on this one too, I'd really appreciate it. We are currently 4-2-1 in the preseason. Lafreniere there has 14 points through 7 games. So he's averaging 2 points a game, which is pretty ridiculous. If you guys missed the last episode, obviously no Stanley Cup with the expansion team, but we did make the playoffs, which I still cannot believe. The Carolina Hurricanes though actually went on with the Stanley Cup. So this team surprised me. This year, I would say we're probably just as good, if not better, which means probably won't make the playoffs this year. I'm definitely going to play it by ear. If I see we are making the playoffs, I might add a little bit. If we're not going to make the playoffs, I'll definitely be selling. So first line here, slightly different. We got Taylor Hall, Sam Reinhardt we signed, big contract, 10.5 million for six years. And March is still on that first line, getting a plus five. Lafreniere's on the second with Peyton Krebs and Dreber. Dreber we drafted in like the 2023 redo draft. This is his rookie season, 85 overall. Amazing shot there. Hoping he can maybe actually win the Calder Trophy for best rookie. Arvidsson, Greg, Perron on the third line. Made sure to give uh, Greg their off the rush X Factor after making the NHL. Fourth line, I think, is pretty solid. Maroon, Dowd, Akposo. They also get a plus three chem boost. Defensively here, I think it's like the exact same as last season. Gerard, Dersey, Barry, Harley, and then we got Romanov, Kulp on the bottom pair. I think, you know, the pairs have switched up a little bit, but still the same top six. Goaltending wise, we got Knight now as our starter, 85 overall. Wolf backing him up is an 84. You look at the power play, I think. You know, power play one there is actually not too bad. We don't have any players in the 90s yet, but we're an expansion team. We're, we're working towards that. Power play two is not too bad either. The four mans are fine. PK wise, definitely could be get better chemistry wise. As you guys will see, a lot of, you know, minus chemistry, but like it's the right guys out there. The third three man actually has a minus five. So we'll see how much that hurts us. AHL wise here, a lot of good players. Stan Coben, 81 overall is our first line center. You got some Moscovich we traded for. Zadina maybe can make a play. Gunler's a 79 now. Defensively, we actually drafted Levshinov, 10th overall in the 2024 draft. Even our future number one defenseman. We also get plus three chem boost on the second and third pairs. Gold time, we got an 82 Dostal starting the AHL, which is kind of insane, honestly, for the AHL team. Now, they actually made the playoffs last year. They were pretty good, so hopefully they could uh, make a run at the Calder Cup. Before we get started sending here, guys, as always, I'll show you the ratings. Also, too, I should mention, no change in the captaincy. We've still got three guys rocking A's. I'm still not sure, you know, who I want to get the C2 yet, but... As you guys can see here, we got 93 offense, 89 defense, 86 goaltending. Let's get started. And actually, one more thing, guys, before we start simming games, gotta do some contract extensions here. As you can see at the bottom, we got about 15 and a half million in cap space. Taylor Hall, he's on the thumbnail, so we gotta keep him. Also, probably my favorite junior player of all time. Wants 9.2 million for four years. I'm gonna keep him, but I'm gonna wait. There's no way he's asking for 9 million at the end of the year. At least I don't think he will. Lafreniere wants 6 million for four. That's actually really fair, I think. Um, wow, okay. I mean, six years, he's still a UFA. We have to give him a three-year deal if we want to keep his RFA status. Let's try a six by six. I think for him, that's a pretty fair offer. And he might say yes. David Perron, I don't really mind letting go of. Ridley Gregg down the NHL, only asking for 825 for two years. I mean, honestly, let's just do that. We're probably going to have to pay more after that. But for the first two years, it's an absolute steal. Tyson Berry, really don't have to make a move on yet. Romanov here wants 4-6 for an 82. It's a little bit pricey. You're already paying Harley more than I'd like to, so probably hold off. Same with the fourth liners. Goaltending Wolf. I actually can't extend yet since we gave him a one-year deal. Speaking of, Dawson needs to be extended. We can do him. He wants 5 million. He's playing in the AHL this year, so if we just wait, he should uh, come down in price. All right, guys, there we go. Lafreniere said yes. That's huge. Same with the Grave. <laughs> Making league men as a 3C, I think, is insane. All right, guys, so it's now the end of December. We record there 21, 13, and 3. We're currently in a wild card spot. We're actually only one point back of the second and third spots in the central AHL team here. 20, 15, and 1. So they're fighting for a playoff spot. I think they're actually doing worse than last season, which is pretty surprising. Their leading score there is Ryan Merkley. NHL wise, our leading score is Sam Reinhardt. Over a point per game, so. Definitely was a good free agent signing for us. And check this out, guys. At the trade deadline, we have record there of 38, 20, and 4. I think just like last year, after the Christmas break, we just started playing insane. Like, we are somehow first place in the Central Division now with 80 points. We're actually tied for first in the NHL, the Lightning and the Bruins. I don't know how this team just makes it happen. HL team's also in a playoff spot now. Third place there, 38, 21, and 3 record. And the HL scoring leader is now Samoskovic. And NHL-wise, it's actually Lafreniere. Okay, 64 and 62. I mean... I feel like he's a guy who could potentially give the C to. He's a young player. Could definitely build a team around him if he continues to grow. At this point, we're a conservative buyer. Like last year, the team showed me that they can, you know, make the playoffs. We actually even won our first round series against the Avs somehow. But we'll get to the deadline, see what's available. Saros there, 90 overall, number one player. Thing is, we're pretty stacked at goalie. Shea Theodore would be kind of nuts. Drew Doughty, John Carlson, the Capitals still have on the block. Stevenson there with the Blues. 
Campe, Nelson, Kuznetsov, of course. We traded away. I thought that was a pretty good deal. We brought back Berkeley Catton. Petrangelo there. Kopitar. Two years left, $7 million. I mean, I think the guy that might make sense is Theodore, depending how, like, our defensemen are doing. We've got a lot of, like, decent offensive defensemen, but nobody that's actually insane. So, we'll take a look here. Samuel Girard, he's got, I mean, 40 points. That's pretty good, I would say, for Girard. Barry's got 41. I think we're getting pretty good reduction. Dursey's doing kind of mad there. He's got uh, 22. But, yeah, between Girard and Barry, I think we have enough... Offensive production there from our defenseman. Also curious to see how Knight Sweeney is our starting goalie. 919 save percentage, 27 goals against. He's actually crushing it. Okay, awesome to see. Wolf below 900. Probably gonna have to end up moving on from like one of these three for sure, if not two of them, because I think you know they're too good to have his backups or even HL starter in Dossel's case. Also, guys, Dreber here is now 87 overall, and he's got 49 points in his rookie season so far. Like I said. Good chance we'll actually take home the uh, Calder Trophy. And I was looking all around the league, guys, and I really couldn't find a trade that made sense. This is the only one I kind of like. Adam Lowry here on the block for the Capitals could be, like, the perfect fourth-line center. He's 6'6", he's a big body, 83 overall there. Puts up some points. You can see defensively, very solid. Physically, five stars there. Kind of does it all. Cap-wise, not too crazy. 3.2 million, offering up a second-rounder, 2026. Pretty equal value. The Caps should say yes. Trades rejected, too far off. Interesting. So he's got a bit more value. We do have a couple sixth round picks in this year's draft. Well, I'll try adding one of those. Now they say yes. So honestly, guys, it's probably like the only move I want to make. Like our team is in such a weird spot because obviously we're first in the division, but like when you look at our team on paper, really not that insane. Then in terms of like, you know, being a buyer, we don't have a ton of assets to give up. As we're such a new team, we really don't have a crazy amount of prospects. The prospects we do have, I think we're going to be building around in the future draft pick wise even don't only have you know the ton of draft picks to build up haven't made you know that many trades so really could maybe move a goalie but you look at the values here i think it makes more sense to actually just hold on to them and see which one ends up growing the most that's who will be the starter um until then i don't really think it's worth you know risking a trade if we're just getting back like even a second round pick probably not even that much all right guys so the trade deadline's now over again just made the one small move we're such like a strange spot it's hard to make a blockbuster happen without knowing kind of you know which way we're still heading are we buyers are we sellers uh, Yuri Kulitz there to the Capitals. You got Jason Zucker to the Sabres. Callum Ritchie to the Kings. Anything else here? I'm not really. Nightfist to the Jets. Klingberg to the Coyotes. Obviously had a big year with the Leafs last season. Christian Dvorak there to the Wild. Ethan Bear to the Penguins. Trevor Moore to the Flames. Pretty big. Samuel Hanzik and Etchin Morin going the other way. Barbashev to the Red Wings with Ben Hutton. Gavrikov to the Sabres. Jake DeBrus to the Ducks. William Wallander there, the St. Louis Blues. Clark here's on waivers. Let's see, 2378 high top nine sniper. He's got high top nine potential, which is honestly pretty solid, making less than a million bucks. I'm gonna claim him. All right, guys, so at the trade deadline, team is basically the same, just to change the fourth line here with Dowd now playing left wing. We got Lowry in the middle and Akpostos on the right wing. Actually, notice Akpostos kind of been crushing it, playing fourth line. He's got 18 goals, and somehow he actually lost his born leader X Factor, but that's okay. He's producing for us. I think, too, I had to scratch Maroon just because he was taking so many penalties. You can see there, 89 penalty minutes. Basically, he's putting us on the PK, which isn't ideal. You look at other fourth liners. Dow, there's 21. Lowry, 30. Ogposo, 14. Like, 89 is kind of bad. Uh, defensively, we're still the same in terms of the PK. Lowry's actually on the first PK unit. He's also on the first three-man PK, where you can see we have terrible chemistry, but, like, we're first in the division, so apparently it doesn't really matter. In terms of the AHL team, I think they're still the exact same. So... Hopefully both these teams can keep it up and both make the playoffs. All right, guys, so it's on the end of the regular season. As you can see there, we finished one win shy of 50, 49, 26, and seven record. I still can't believe how this team is getting it done. We did finish second place in the division, five behind the Jets there with 105 points. I think that actually puts us third place in the NHL. The Lightning there with 108 were also above us. Leading scorer here for the NHL team was Sam Reinhardt, 85 and 82. So again, very happy with that signing HL team wise. Samoskovich, 74 and 82. They also get in the playoffs with a wild card spot. And now look at the stats of the rest of the players here, guys. You got Lafreniere actually putting up a point per game playing second line, first power play. I think he's going to get a jump from 85 overall, especially with that lowly potential. This was a huge season for him. March so there, 79 is still pretty solid. Dreber, the rookie, 64 points with 33 goals. Definitely has a chance to win that Calder Trophy. Taylor Hall at 60. Krebs, pretty close. He's an 83. He's got a jump, 58 point season. Barry put up 54. He's on an expiring deal. I think he'll definitely jump in rating. We'll see what kind of contract we can get him under. Gerard, 45. Arvidsson, 40 is not bad. I mean, overall, I think pretty happy with everybody. Jersey, maybe expect a bit more production from, but other than that, yeah, cannot complain. Goaltending stats here. Spencer Knight, a 919 save percentage, 266 goals against. Wolf ended up being above 900. AHL here, Dostal, 902. 
in terms of AHL players behind Samoskovic. You got Stan Coven with 70. Probably gets called to the NHL team next year. Phillips here, 63, is not too bad. Merkley, of course, puts up a ton of points as a defenseman. Even Levshinov, who's rookie in the AHL, had almost 50 points as a D-man. That's very impressive. And now look at the entire league here, guys. Connor McDavid gets another R.S. Trophy, 116 points. Connor McDard, his sophomore season, 109. Now a 92 overall. That is ridiculous from him. He put up way more points this year than last. Tied with Jack Hughes there, Trevor Zegras, Robertson, Dreisaitl, Kyle Connor, Nathan McKinnon, Zach Hyman, 103. Definitely like Kind of, you know, a new age of players here. In terms of goals, Matthews had 58. Defensive scoring here, Adam Fox, 90 with a plus 7. Probably going to be winning the Norris Trophy. Carlson, though, still putting up numbers. Sam McCarr, in terms of goaltenders here, swimming in the most wins, 42. Save percentage for a starter. Marc-Andre Fleury, actually, 9-2 with the Ottawa Senators at 40 years old. That's pretty impressive. And then goals against here looks to be, actually, Spencer Knight for a starter, 266. I don't really see him winning the Vesna though. Rookie skaters, come on. And Tarkfist here on the Blackhawks, 74 points. Michko, 72. You got Celebrini, 69. Gauthier, Dreber there was fifth in points. Did, you know, tie Tarkfist, though, with the best plus minus. I think this guy was just playing first line with Bedard. Probably why, you know, Bedard had such an awesome season with the 109 points. And in terms of the entire league here, guys, as I mentioned, we finished third place. Like, that is pretty crazy for it being our second season. Tons of teams with 100 plus points. Jeez, eight in total, which means probably a lot of teams were terrible this season. Arizona kind of screwed, gained 14th there and missing. Devils get in at 21. And last in the NHL, you got the Columbus Blue Jackets with 64 points. Obviously, just fired their GM kick line in, in real life. Curious to see what they do at the deadline. Sharks there, second last. I mean, yeah, you had a lot of teams in the 70s. Goals four here. Maple Leafs were first. We were actually sixth in goals four. So our goals four were much better this season. Last year, they were like kind of middle of the pack. Goals against. We had the third best goals against in the league. So, yeah, in terms of the numbers, we're a much better team this season. Hopefully, we can actually make a deep playoff run. And in the first round, guys, we actually have a rematch here. The Cardo Avalanche, which I'm not too excited for. Like, the Avalanche are a pretty stacked team. They usually win multiple cups when you go through the franchise sim. So, that first line hasn't changed. McKinnon and Ranton, they're both 96s now. Bertuzzi there with Colton and Lekkinen. I mean, they got Yarncroft on the team defensively. Taze McCarr is still that top pair. They brought in Tyler Myers, only a 78, but he is 6'8. Sean Walker there is 82. Goaltending, Yorgi still starting. Halak backing him up. I mean, they got probably like the best top three players in the league on their team. And McKinnon, Ranton, McCarr. Like, I don't know if any other team has a top three that good, but we have some depth. We've produced well in the regular season. You can tell I'm not too optimistic, but we'll see what happens. We actually have the home ice advantage here. So, first two games are in Salt Lake. 2-1 loss, 7-4 win. Okay, I'll take 1-1 one one through 2. Head to Denver now. I mean, I actually get 2 wins. All right. Game 5, could win at home. 6-0 loss. Game 6 now in Colorado. 7-4 loss. Game 7. This thing, this thing's tied up 3 apiece. Can we do it? We're down 1 early. Sean Walker, of all people. 2-1, to one, the team answers back. Arvidsson and Lowry with shorthanded goal, of course. The guy we picked up. And we hold on there, 3-1, Reinhardt with the insurance goal. I mean, the fact Lowry we picked him up at the deadline and he scores not only the game winner, but also the series winner, that is huge. Getting it done shorthanded too. So, second round here, guys, we got the St. Louis Blues. All right, I'm not really too sure what their team's looking like at this point. All right, guys, so the Blues here have Buchnevich, Thomas, and Kyra on their first line. So, kind of like the Adjus' best three players there. Tropchenko, 79, is getting second line minutes, probably just because he has the X Factor. Kind of stupid there from the AIGM, but Celebrini's playing second line center. Only a 79 still, even though he had really good seasons. I'm surprised he hasn't grown at all yet. Stevenson there, second line left wing. The bottom six is kind of meh. Defensively, Falk, Pareko are pretty decent. They've lost Krug, so defense isn't crazy. Hope for starter. I mean, I feel like the Avs team was better than this team. I feel like our team's honestly probably better than this team, but they're in the second round of the playoffs. They obviously deserve to be here. Reinhardt's averaging up over a point per game right now in the playoffs. We got the home ice advantage again. Here we go. Game one's a loss. Game two's a win, though. We'll take that. Uh, next two games here in St. Louis. We lose the first one. Game four, we win, though. So tied up to a piece. Game five. And it's another win in OT. Chance to put this away. Game six. And we do it. All right. So this team's moving on to the conference final in their second ever year as a franchise. How crazy is that? We got the Flames now, who are 8-1 and one so far in the playoffs. I'm not sure how they're doing that good. Let's see, Reinhardt still uh, averaging a point per game. And now look at this Flames here, guys. We're somehow in the conference final, which I feel like they'll be nowhere near next season in real life. They got Huberdeau, Kadri, Bovier, the first line. Okay, so they got Bovier from the Blackhawks. Maybe he might have been a free agent. Coleman, Backlund, Moore. Moore is obviously a good pickup. Kuzmenko's there. Camp 83, they got from the Leafs. Manji Apani, Coronado, Zary, Shrangovich. So they do have a lot of depth here. I'll give them that, but definitely no star players. 
Uh, even like Huber Doe is still only an 85. Weger, Anderson, Miller, Hannafin extended, Jones, Slavia, hopefully I said that right. I mean, defense, they got a good top pair. They got Markstrom and Nets, only an 83. This is honestly kind of insane to me that this team's going on an 8-1 run, but obviously they got hot at the right time. Let's see if we can put a stop to that. So now that we're in the conference final, guys, I'll sim this thing period by period. In game one here, I think we have the home ice advantage. We're down 2-1 early. Perron gets one for us. Bolvier, Coleman for them. 3-2 now. Harley and Miller, both former Stars defensemen. And we lose that 4-3. Miller again, March so for us. He actually tied it up, unfortunately. Flames were able to get the game winner. So down one early. And we were in Salt Lake, as I said. So hopefully can win at least one. If we go down 0-2 after having the home ice advantage, not going to be a good spot to be in. Here we go. First period, 0-0. Second period, we're up 1. Dursey, actually. 1-1. One, one. Huberdo ties it. Are you kidding me? And Manchia Pani on the power play gets the game winner. So definitely not where we want to be. Down 2-0 to the Flames team. And we're headed to Calgary. Game 3 here, guys. And it's 4-4 four four after 1. What the heck? Okay. Margeso, Gerard, Reinhardt, and uh, Margeso again. Kuzmenko, Coronado, Coleman, and Kadri for them. And 5-4, Huberdo gets the go-ahead goal. And they hold on there, 6-4, Mangiapane with the insurance goal. So <laughs> this is not looking good for us. Down 3 to nothing. We have to be like the fifth team ever to uh, do a reverse sweep and make it happen in the conference final. I'm not liking our odds, but I mean, you never know. I didn't like our odds to start this expansion and somehow we made the playoffs in our first two seasons. And 2 nothing lead. Marcheseau, Arvidsson, 4 nothing now. Marcheseau again, Ocposo. 6-3, to three. they actually almost climbed back. Luckily able to hold on there. All right, guys, so we said no to the sweep in game four. Game five back at home. Down one early. And 1-1, one, one. Marcheseau tied it up. 3-2, to two. Well, are you kidding me? Shrangovic actually getting the lead. Marcheseau again, and then Arvidsson. Mar Marcheseau's honestly been pretty crazy for us these playoffs. I think, you know, showing why he's got a Conn Smythe trophy to his name. So, series is now 3-2 Flames. We have a chance to tie it up in game six and have literally all the momentum head home for game seven. Can we do it? 1-0 early for them. Hannafin. Oh, <laughs> okay. 4-0. Back with a couple more again. And yeah, 4-1. to one. Dreamer made it so we didn't get shut out. But unfortunately, we got knocked out there in the conference final by the Calgary Flames of all teams. That's crazy. Also, two guys, our AHL team apparently got swept in the first round by Belleville Senators. Kind of tough. All right, guys. So the playoffs are complete. And the Maple Leafs actually won the Stanley Cup. They did it pretty quick, honestly. Calgary Wranglers there with the Calder Cup. So... I think, you know, our team keeps getting better. Last year, we made it to the second round. This year, conference final. LA jumps from 10 to 1. That's a 2025 draft. So, we'll probably take Higgins or Misa first overall. You got Seattle there, jumping from 3 to 2. Calgary, 13th overall via Florida. So, again, kind of weird spot we're in. As I mentioned before, even though we're doing well, we can't be, you know, full-on buyers quite yet. Sam Reinhardt kind of popped off for us in the playoffs. 23 points in 19 games. Take a look and see how everybody else did. March or so is a point per game. Dreaver had 11 goals, 16 points. Gerard, 16. That's a D-man solid. Hall, 13. Not bad. Lafreniere, 12. Not bad. I mean, you know, maybe Lafreniere could have been a bit better based on regular season performance. Goal tending wise, night below 900. Definitely need better than that from him. But he, but he does have an X-Factor now. Still 85, but I think he'll probably go up in rating. And you want to look at the playoff tree quickly here, guys. You can see the Leafs beat the Capitals in 7, Hurricanes in 6, Sabres in 7 for beating the Flames in five. And now taking a look at the awards, I think we know all the team ones. Individually, McDavid, another Rush trophy. Also got the heart. You got Bouchard there, James Norris. Interesting, I didn't think he was going to win it. Bedard there with the Lady Bing. Tarnkvist, Calder. You got Matthews with the Conn Smythe. Vasilevsky, Vesna, along with William Jennings. You got Siegenthaler, Bill Masterton. Ducks coach, back-to-back -back Jack Adams. Again, I hate how the game does this because it never happens in real life. Uh, Kopitar, Selkie trophy. You got McDavid there, Ted Lindsay, and then Matthews, Marisha Shard. In terms of the AHL awards, I don't think we won a team award. I'm just going to quickly check here. Now, we didn't win our division. Individually here, Will Smith actually most points. Also got MVP. Demidov most goals. Iserman best rookie. You got Nimala best defenseman. Sawgard best goalie. Who's a Dino? Hopefully I said that right. MVP of the playoffs. Linus Omarks down the AHL. You got sportsmanship. Community involvement here goes to Nosenin. And then Sawgard there also had lowest goals against. And now next year, guys, we'll get retired players. We actually have a couple. So Zach Breezy there with the Oilers now. Kyle Post retired, even though he had a solid season, 30 points playing fourth line. You also got Milan Lucic there, Edler, Cogliano, Pat Maroon also retired. So two-thirds of our fourth line are retiring. Goaltenders here, Halak and Elliott, who I think were both actually a tandem for St. Louis for a few years, which is kind of funny. And now before we get to the draft here, guys, take another look at Taylor Hall's contract extension. He wants $7 million now as an 87. So he actually went up in rating, but he's asking for less because, I mean, the $9 million asked before was crazy. 33 
Two years till he's 35 makes a lot more sense. He's asking for 6.5. I would do, I think, six and a quarter there. If he says no, we probably can get him at what he's asking, especially since he does want the extension. Tyson Berry now 85, put up some points for us. He's 33. Two year deal till he's 35. He wants almost seven. I would do six and a half, and I think I'll probably let go of Romanov. He's only an 82, and he's gonna ask for, I think, a pretty big raise. Peron, I'm honestly just gonna let go. Yeah, five million bucks there. He's 83, sorry. I think we can actually get a good return for him because he is still um, an RFA there. We have control of his contract. But we're now into the draft here, guys. I'm curious to see if there's any, like, you know, surprise prospects available. Misa's actually, you know, going first overall here, looks like. Hagen's number two. You got Lamin in there is also medium elite. Benak, Eklund, I think, is medium elite. Same with Hensler there. Take a look at the gems. So you got Axelson and goalie. Could be, like, an early third-round pick. Hillman there, guaranteed low elite. Going to go way late. That's actually a really solid find by our scouts. Daigle, they got him at medium franchise potentially. I'm pretty sure that was a medium elite. He's going to go second round. This Bowman guy could be low franchise enforcer defenseman. I'm thinking maybe he's a low elite. We'll definitely take him though, just because might as well. All right, guys. And now right here, I'm trying to trade the Philadelphia Flyers again. Early second round pick. Atkinson's just there for the contract. Offering up Romanov and a fifth. They want both. And they say yes. Okay, so... I'm actually eyeing a pretty good player there with that early second rounder. And in terms of our pick, guys, I think I'm just going to sim to it and hopefully we can get a solid player. Looking at the rest of the first round here, you can see mostly medium top six, medium top fours. At this point, you can see one of the Griva twins going to the Jets there. It doesn't look like any elite steals here, so probably just, you know, the ties at the top of the draft. Let's see. Hensler there at six, the Canadians. Eklund, Benak, Laminin, 80 overall. Uh, Hagen's there, 77 high elite, Misa, 79 high elite. And I was curious to you guys, so Gusto Grieve got taken at 13, 74 medium top 6, and then his brother there, same rating potential, got taken at 25, so the Jets just got way more value. With our pick, I was kind of already eyeing a guy, luckily he is still here, Matthew Schaefer of the Erie Otters. I think he's at least medium top 4, and yeah, he is. He's also 71 overall, I think, late first round. He's gonna be very, oh my gosh, look at the X factor he's coming out of the draft with. Yeah, that's a great pick for us. I'm also seeing, too, he's got very good skating stats. Hand-eye could definitely be a little bit better, but apart from that, like, solid player. And I just in our next pick here, guys. Second pick in the second round. There's a guy who I think doesn't have the big potential boost yet on this roster. At this point, he's medium elite, but Porter Morton, I think, is only, like, medium top six in this draft. And as you can see, he is. Sunny overall, though, out of the draft, very high rated, so I think we're looking pretty good. Third round here, guys. We could take a chance on a guy like Globov or Meyer, who might be medium elite. NHLATA, though, guaranteed five years. This guy, they're looking at three. And there's really no one else to take at this spot, so we'll, so we'll try Dmitry Globov. 69, medium elite. Let's go. What a steal. End of the third round. Those are the kind of picks you need to actually build a dynasty. And now next up here, guys, we're picking at 130, so probably going to go to one of my pins, especially since we just landed a medium elite. Looks like Hillman there, the guaranteed low elite, is next to go, 147. And he's 50 overall, sniper, not too bad. All right, guys, now next year I'm offering the Coyotes a 6th and a 7th for a 5th this year. They say yes. I probably slightly overpaid, but couldn't find any, like, other guys they wanted. The reason for this is try and take that goalie who's got a very small chance of being low franchise. I think it's worth the risk. Weston Bowman here. I'm oh, sorry, not a goalie. He's the enforcer defenseman. Small chance to be low franchise. And he's a low elite. Okay, that's what I kind of figured. It honestly, definitely worth the picks. Get him in the fifth round. Defensive defense, but not an enforcer. He can end up being a really good player for us. I think that's it for the draft, guys. Overall, I think went amazingly for us. We got such solid players every single pick. Like, cannot complain at all. And there we go, guys. Taylor Hall did accept his extension. Tyson Berry, too. So, I think we're bringing back a couple of solid players. And now, looking at the re-sign phase here, we got about 18.5 million in cap space. Most of our guys are locked up. Definitely had a lot of growth this season. Lafreniere there, now an 87. Krebs, 86. Take a look here. Even Arvidsson actually got to an 85. So Atkinson, 85 overall. I don't really think I'm going to sign him. He wants 3.8, he's 36. I'd rather give that ice time to younger players. Didn't let him go. David Prawn as well, 37. Didn't really do anything for us. We have some guys I think I'd rather on the third line, like say a Stan Coven. So Moskovich even now an 80 could potentially make the team. Two years he wants league men. I mean, three years a million bucks. Might as well pay him a little bit more now because we can bury that entire contract anyways. Rucker McGrory now needs a deal. He's a guy, too, that if he grows, could make the NHL team. Gupari, same thing. Could be a fourth liner at 79. Give him three years and a million bucks. Again, if we can bury the whole thing, might as well do the deal. Now, Nick Dowd here, we could bring back to play on the fourth line with Lowry. I feel like he was solid. We'll do one year at one and a half. And now, looking at our defense, after trading away Romanov, we're kind of short a player, but I do think Levshinov could grow this summer and be our sixth guy. If he doesn't, we'll probably have to make a trade. Also, you guys, looking at our goaltenders here, we have to re-sign a bunch of dudes. 
Uh, Lindbergh could definitely find a better AHL backup. The two fringe starters, I mean, I don't really think they're honestly even worth the contract spot. Wolf and Dostal definitely signed. Wolf wants one year, three million. I get so much more. That's like honestly so pricey for backup. Qualify for a million. I'm going to offer 2.5, which is more than I want to pay, but he is pretty high rated. He does have the potential. Might have to move on from him. Dostal here wanted five. Now he wants like 1.5. He actually dropped in rating because obviously being an HL starter. Also, you guys, I forgot to show up. I actually extended the head coach. I feel like he's been pretty good for us making the playoffs two years. Dostal there said yes. Sam Kupari, Samoskovich, Harvey Pernard, Phillips, Dowd, Wolf said no. Thompson said yes there. Millette, Kapanen, Gundler, a lot of these guys are just AHL players. So basically, I think Wolf's the only guy we still have to extend. Uh, most of these players here are just going to go back to junior if they're unsigned or whatever other league they're in. I mean, as well too, Wolf, like we kind of qualified, could wait to move him. Like I said, might end up having to trade him just because uh, Knight ended up being the guy who's a bit higher rated. And he put up really good numbers for us last year. All right, guys, another fancy period. I'm curious to see who's available because we do have some money there. 17 million. Noah Dobson wants 13. Miko Rantanen. Wow, 96 overall player we could sign. He wants 11 7. I mean, we have the money. We have a spot in our roster. This would be ridiculous. Miko Rantanen. I mean, honestly, too, 96 overall, only asking for 11 7 is kind of a steal. Sam Bennett there. Brent Burns, of course. Uh, we did draft before trading him away. Now, no Dobson there. Yeah, he's an RFA, so really probably not even able to get him. Ranton's definitely worth considering. Jeremy Swayman's available. Saros, or Swayman's RFA. We got Saros there, Flurry. So actually some pretty good goalies here. Dustin Wolf, of course, we still have to get under contract. And we do need at least one AHL goalie, so we'll take a look here. And new one's already 25. Not really what I'm looking for. Clang, we've signed before. 23.74. High fringe potential. I think he's probably a guy. There's also this guy here, 2173 medium fringe. Clang here though has slightly higher potential, so let's see if we can get him locked up to be the HL backup. Now Jackson Lacombe here, guys, is available. 82 overall wants 1.2 million. He's an RFA. I'll make him an offer. Uh, I doubt the Ducks don't match this, but like we might as well try. Let's see. Two years, 1.375. Again, I'm like almost positive they'll match it. And then Miko Rantanen. <laughs> we made the playoffs the last two years, even if we're rebuilding, like a nice overall player. One of the best players in the league, you make an offer on. I feel like way more than two teams here should be interested. We'll offer 12-5 for seven. Again, this is a steal. A 96 is usually they'll end up asking for like 15 million. So crazy, crazy cheap contract there for Rantanen. Also, guys, I see Luke Lindenning here is available. 77 overall, but look at his defensive stats. Four and a half stars, 90 D awareness, 91 faceoff, 89 shot block, and stick check. Just the ultimate shutdown dude. He's a guy like we could put as our 4C, maybe actually move Lowry to the wing. I know he's saying center overall, but just so good defensively. Have him help out on the PK. Let's do like a one year there, 900K. Worst case, I think, you know, he plays that role in the AHL team. And here we go, guys. Jackson Lacombe just got back to me. He said he accepts the offer as of now, but Ducks will probably match. Luke and Denning there said yes. Cal Klang said yes. Still waiting to hear back from Rantanen. And he said yes. Let's go. That is a huge signing for this team. I can't believe we got such a good player like that for free. Again, I think he definitely deserved more than the 12 5 we offered. Ducks there, not willing. Wait, what? Not willing to match? So we just got our sixth defenseman, and Levshinov, even if he gets to like an 80, we don't have to like rush him to the NHL. So that actually worked out very well. Now, as you can see, that bomb there, we still have 5.3 million in calf space, but honestly, I don't really think we need anything more for our team this season. Also, guys, we have the money. Might as well re-sign Dustin Wolf here. Make sure, you know, we have some value. We'll try offering, like, 275 just to, you know, give ourselves a bit more money at the deadline if we are contending again. And there you go. Wolf did say yes. So, like I said, I think our team is honestly set for next season. Could get a sixth-round pick for Nick Dowd. We got Lowry in the middle. We could put Kupari left wing. I was even seeing Noel Gunler maybe on the right wing. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna say yes to that. We, we got clear some cap space. I think we do have some other bodies that can play the fourth line. Wow, and look at this big summer trade this one down, guys. Drew Doughty going to Carolina. LA there gets a few prospects in the third. And now this is kind of nuts, guys. I just checked for agency looking for an HL defenseman. We only have five right now. This Jocelyn guy, 2064 low elite. I missed him before. Could get him for free, which would be pretty big. Probably not high enough rated though to really make our top six in the HL. So looking for a guy, I mean 21, 71. I think I'd probably rather Yermo though, 2378 medium top six. Was drafted by the Vancouver Canucks. He of course was involved in the Elias Lindholm trade. I'm not sure why the Flames would not resign him, but I'll get him signed here for free and again just make the HL team a little bit better. 
There we go. Jocelyn said yes. I assume Yermo will too. And he did. Now, next, you guys are having a small trade the Boston Bruins, offering up a couple AHL forwards we don't really need. Darren in 25, 77. Chmielski, 26, 79. We have a ton of AHL forwards who can kind of fill their spots for younger. They say yes. We get a fifth round pick back, essentially for free. And now, next, you guys will show what the team looks like for next season. I honestly think we're pretty stacked. Like, we've had a ton of growth from young players. So, first line here, we got Lafreniere, Reinhardt, and Rantanen. Ranchin, of course, is a massive ad, 96 overall player. He's that superstar we've been looking for. They get a plus five chem boost. Second line here is kind of interesting. We got Marcheseau, Dreber in the middle, and Taylor Hall. Dreber's a left winger, but he's got 77 faceoffs. So I think he can play center. He's got an amazing shot on him. Could play on first line. Unfortunately, though, it'd be all snipers with him, Reinhardt, and Ranchin. So I think this kind of makes more sense. Lafreniere as well, I think, playing first line could grow even more. Third line, you got Krebs on the wing now. Stan Coven, 3C. Arvidsson on the right wing. Fourth line here, you got Noel Gundler, Lowry, and Ridley Gregg. Gregg, of course, has some grit to his game. He's got the 93 aggressiveness, 88 body check. Lowry, we kind of already know it about him. And then Gundler here, actually, surprisingly, had five-star physical there. He's also got a 91 stick check. He's fast, so I think he can play in that role. Looking at the defense, pretty much no change. Aside from Lacombe coming in for Romanov, Harley's up to an 83 now, which is nice to see. Goaltending wise, still got Knight as a starter, Wolf backing him up. In the AHL, Dossel's down at 84, so we literally have too many good goalies. Gonna have to trade one. First line, you got Harvey Pinard playing with McGrordy and Samoskovich. He's an 82, but just too much depth in the NHL team, so nasty first line in the AHL. You got Kapari, Zadina there. I mentioned Glenn Denning, he's on the 4C, just uh, could not make the NHL team at 77, basically. Defensively, we got Mercury top pair, as he sims so well playing with Levshinov. Luckily, his role there is depth defenseman, so. HL top pair actually makes sense for him. They get a plus two. You got Thompson there, Yermo, Krull, Edwards, which I think gives us a pretty solid like top six defense in the AHL. So both teams should be back in the playoffs next year. And now one thing I'd actually really like you guys to do is tell me who should be the captain of this team for year three. I feel like at this point we gotta name a captain. So Hall and March so both been wearing A's. I gave an A to Ranton after not resigning Perron, who was wearing the third A. I feel like it's time to name someone the captain. Personally, I feel like Ranton it could be it. He's a superstar coming in. Could also be Reinhardt, could be Marcheseau, Hall, Lafreniere. You could even give it to like Dursey, Barry, Girard. I feel like there's a lot of options, but let me know in the comments section who you guys think should get the C. And now before I do end the episode, guys, I'll show our ratings for next season. Maybe we could win the cup in third year's expansion team, I think. That'd be pretty impressive. So we've got 100 offense. I did not expect that. Kind of insane, honestly. 92 defense, 88 goaltending. Like I said, guys, curious to see what the third season holds. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the sub button down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.